I so far have not just put my automation cars into BMNG, I've also put it into a set of Corsa with a god awful video. Oh, this is so infuriating. Yeah, basically just me fumbling around not really knowing anything about a set of Corsa from the limited amount of time I played it. But also I put it into real life with an even worse video. Yeah. I tried to be funny. It was just cringe. But don't worry, I want to redeem myself and also add to this list of things where I have put my car into more and more inappropriate areas. Unappro inappropriate. Me do words that speak English, yes. The current game is SnowRunner. I don't have a lot of experience with it. I've never made a car for any of the Spin Tires games. I used to make maps back in the day. So I'm going to have to follow somebody's tutorial for this. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Glitchworks video. So if you want to play along at home, basically follow what they're doing. And I'm just going to be doing it from an automation car's perspective. Well, we got a second. For those of you that want more Philman86, I do also have an IRL channel. So you can go check that out. First thing to do is to find my car to export, and this is quite an old vehicle now. Though I think we're gonna do a little bit of fiddling. We're gonna remove the fenders to make this a little bit easier to work with. And I think we're going to go bigger wheels and tires, since I don't think that this is enough. Yeah, that works. And before we export this, I have one important thing to tell you. I don't know exactly if this game is going to have transparency maps much like BMNG does, so instead, I've once again chosen this body which has no cutouts. This is all made up of just some 3D shapes, so keep that in mind. For now though, we're gonna go and export and I'm gonna make sure that I've got unbreakable fixtures and then export this. I grab said model from the vehicle's bloatus area inside of the code name there. We're gonna grab the DAE file. And this is where the work begins. <laughs> and oh boy, there is a lot of work to be done. First of all, I'm not gonna be modeling, uh, like leaving the model of the engine in, so that can go away. Differential can stay. Suspension is not quite in the right places, but I could look that up. By going into here, we have the main J-beam for this version, and then on the suspension X, we're not going to worry about, though it is surprisingly offset, so we'll keep an eye on that. Then the Y, this is what we're going to be looking at mostly. And, and maybe that, I don't know. I don't know why there's a Z offset. Anyway, 1.22, we're gonna go G to move, Y minus one. Nope, that's not right. Hmm, you know what? I don't understand. And instead what we're gonna do is just kind of move it vaguely into place. You know what, actually, nah, screw this. We're gonna go object apply scales. There, now all scales are set right. And apparently I have to rotate this around the middle. Of this. So we're gonna go 3D cursor, rotate. And I think it's positive X is the right one. So rotate that by 90 degrees. And this exhaust, oh, you know what? I do need just the tip of it to come out here. So rotate 90 degrees around and plop you in there. Next step is to put wheels and tires in place. Oh, I'm an idiot. He literally then just goes on to say, you know what, you don't need the wheels and tires. Great! And at the end of the first episode, which wasn't too long, we've got ourselves some nodes rigged up. And now onto his episode of suspension. Rather simple to go through. First, however, apparently, is this a little bit out of order. We need to make ourselves a shape to fit basically the outline of the body. Now, they don't really say it, but this should be as low poly as possible. Try to keep it very, very simple. I'm basically just gonna get this to line up. Then I'm gonna put one loop cut about there, select that and make it fit. There we go. Now, theoretically, you should have it go a little bit lower around here because there's an indentation here. But if a vehicle's rolled over, that's the most important thing. It's gonna hit here and it's gonna hit here. And then anything in the middle, generally not gonna matter too much. Though, however, that is entirely up to you. I'm just gonna keep it very basic. One, because, well, it's the right thing to do, and two, I'm lazy. The next part, he starts going into how to do weight painting. 
and it works for the most part, but we're gonna do it a little bit different because we have independent suspension. It's not gonna work perfectly, but it works kind of the way that it works in BMNG as well. So if we go back to edit mode, we can get... So this is attached to the body. This part is attached to the suspension. I think if we actually go back to edit mode, if we have a look at front axle, yeah, everything is applied. I don't think I want that. Up. So hold on. Let's go back to edit mode. We'll grab these parts, go to front axle, select zero there, and then assign. If we go back there, it's fixed that part. These parts are going to not be assigned to the suspension, but instead be assigned to the root node. And I think I'm also going to do the same to this steering rack and sway bar. Now, if we have a look, the front axle will rotate everything in red. So the hub is going to move, this part here is gonna move and it's gonna compress there. And then this is gradually gonna stay with the, it's weird, whatever, you get the idea. This, however, oh, no, back here, if we go to object mode, it's kind of all hidden inside of the body. So I don't think it matters. We're just gonna go in and just make sure that everything is assigned to the rear axle. Full weight. And at the end of the episode, you should have something that looks kinda like this. This is starting to look a little bit like a Star Wars uh, kind of 80 walk or something. I'm not sure. But now, on to episode three. And yay, into the coding part already. This is fun, fun times. Doing modding for fun. But hey, at least I get to be able to put my name in here by putting it in the descriptions area. And then back to Blender, we're gonna re-export, but it's FBX this time. So BMNG works in DAE, but pretty much everything else I have ever seen, at least at some point, will work with FBX. Why do they use different formats? I don't know. And by the end of the episode, we get the luxury of having to deal with the jankness that is the in-game modding system. Now, I know why they've done it this way, Way and didn't try to use basically anything not garbage. They used an external service. Which every single time I've used this has been like pulling teeth. God damn it. I don't know exactly what happened, but apparently whilst trying to do the uh, converting thing, it busted. So let's try that again, shall we? Wait, what? Oh. It only stopped the converting thing. Later that same evening. Oh, well, I think this is a tomorrow job considering it's 1 a.m. at the moment. I'll pick this up tomorrow. Maybe why do today what I could do tomorrow anyway? I woke up at a reasonable time today. Working for hours is currently 8.02 p.m. But we finally have it working. Now, I have done a lot of troubleshooting and trying to fix a lot of little different things and the, I don't know how many errors I actually had, but the last thing that I did was went and joined the steering wheel up with the body and then made sure that it had all the weight paints. It turns out my error was that I forgot to give the weight painting to the steering wheel because I wanted to leave the steering wheel separate to do some stuff in the future so then I could make it animate but we'll deal with that later. For now, we have got it working. Actually, you know what? Before I celebrate, uh, let's go find it. For some reason, it's got a weird name. And yes, it does glow. But this is what we get at the end of the automation... Oh, sorry, at the end of episode three. Wait, how do I actually place it? No, no, let me place it, please. Add? I don't think it's gonna let me add. Do I press done? No. Damn it. This is currently what I have working. Okay, the camera's a little bit jank. And oh my god. Oh, I see the vehicle now. I was about to say that it's not working because I was only looking at it like this, but it turns out that the body is ginormous. I think I forgot to set the scale. I basically had to remake the entire thing. So let's go back 0 0.01 and then meters is set to centimeters. Then we're gonna export this again as an FBX, overwrite that, come back into here, go back to mod manager. Wait, no, hold on. I should probably remove my current vehicle. Then in mod manager seven and seven, not converted, yeah. As you can see there, there's two versions of this vehicle now. 
And that's good. Let's go over to create, find our vehicle again. And look at that, it's almost perfect. Oh my God. Are we already there? Okay, let's, uh, how do I switch vehicle? I don't know actually how to switch vehicle. Change truck, switch to, yeah. I don't use this <laughs> vehicle, I'm oh, sorry, this game as much as I normally uh, have in the past. Have I got, okay, handbrake is on. <laughs> so, as you can see, slight issues are going on here but hell yeah by the end of the third episode and 24 hours later we have our vehicle well actually you know what it's not been a full 24 hours yesterday i started like super late and here we go we have our vehicle working i may want to scale it up a little bit so then this driver can actually fit inside of here because at the moment the driver's looking a little bit thick now we haven't done any materials yet that is later to come uh, oh yeah, now I remember what this game is like with fast moving vehicles and oh my god. The, don't, don't get the uh, e-swap controller by Thrustmaster. The, the controls, they get stick drift really quickly. Anyway, let's go on to the next episode! Oh god damn it! And with our bigger body, what we have to do with this episode four is get the wheels to line up and yay, we're back to basically doing what we do in BMG, which is lots of fettling to get things right. So back to the mod scout file, sorry, and we're gonna start moving things. So apparently more positive means more forwards. Who would have thunk? To me, that kind of makes sense, unlike in BMG. Hopefully this vehicle is also big enough to fit this guy in. So I'm thinking, we probably need to move 10, 20, 35 centimeters. So let's start with just adding 30 on just to make life simple. And this is going to require a lot of fettling. So let's put these up to 80. And oh, so close. Well, that's the end of episode four. This is looking rather like a vehicle now. And look at that, it turns left and it turns right and it drives, hold on, eventually forwards. Now we are gonna get rid of front drive on these axles. I'd love this thing to be just rear drive. Oh God, a little bit of the, the buggy camera there, but we have ourselves a vehicle from automation in this game. Time for though, the next episode. Luckily you can skip basically half this episode if what you're doing is just creating a vehicle without any variant parts or whatever. You know in automation how you can do variant parts? That you may want to watch the whole episode, but once you get to the end of the lines, so if you're just doing what I'm doing, basically you can skip the rest of that episode. It goes over to some part add on sort of stuff. Nothing that we mostly need to look at. Next episode. In this episode though, it turns out that they're going to be doing a lot of material work and I'm going to say that I think I know better. This can't go wrong at all. Because this already has an extensive material setup in it, what I plan to do is basically just try to transfer as much over from a .json main materials file to an XML file. Which if we have a look at this XML, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really a one-to-one -one conversion, but I'm going to see how my results turn out. And what my idea is, is in the materials section, I'm just going to put in the materials that is automated, uh, automatically generated, and then we try to reload it in SnowRunner. Oh, that's uh, what is happening back here. Hold on, free cam this. Yep. Okay. I... No ways around this, but I notice one big issue. What I think is happening is if we select a little bit of the body here and then go like that. Yeah, you notice everything is really big here. That's not very good. But if we go to UV maps, this one, things fit in a lot better. Now, this is... Okay, how do I do this? I think I get rid of every unwrap except the good one. So not this one. I don't know what this one is. Hold on, if we go select everything, 
That does nothing. This is for the exhaust mesh. Ah, because we added the exhaust mesh to this mesh as well. So we can get rid of that one, and I think we can get rid of that one. Wait, hold on, I have an idea. I learned how to do this from a comment, and this is how I fix the fact that I sometimes uh, join things together before I make the UV maps match the same names, which is needed, so then we don't have, like, this is not unwrapped at all. Basically, what we're gonna do is select everything except this little itty bitsy corner here. Then we're gonna go hit P, then selection. Then after selecting this, we're gonna double click U, copy U, remove U, go to here, place the name in, select this one as well, then go join, then go in, select U and remove. And now this exhaust stuff is unwrapped in here. Noise. Converting again though, if we close this off now, we can at least see that everything is the right sort of scale, just not everything is painted. But that's not too much of an issue on what we're doing right now, because this is all gonna be fairly monochromatic anyway. And then these little stripes you see running down the side, those are going to be blue. I have to make now blank material templates, basically, just to work here. To do this for this sort of stuff, we're gonna go to this material here, and then we're gonna open it up in GIMP. What we're going to do is grab, I think, like an eyedropper tool, if we can find that. And we're gonna select, like, a white material. Probably, like, this number plate. Not wide enough. But, you know, it's pretty close. Here's hoping that this works. And it turns out that it doesn't. Great. 346 minutes later. I'm confused. I'm looking at the part now where you could change the colors of your vehicle. My mind is just blown. It is, it's f nearly 4 a.m. We do, at the very least, have the car up and running. It's been quite the journey since I don't have the same software he does. But it does drive all around, much like any other vehicle. I've just noticed my exhaust is coming out of the wrong area. Jesus, this has been quite the freaking journey. This has been like two half days, basically. Or one half day and one full day of just trying to futz about and learn this. Hello, Shiny. Good evening, good sir. Uh, do you have a Mod.io account? You kind of need one to play with mods. I have played with mods before, so I hope Okay. Fully do. You know, I actually, what's your Mod.io uh, username? I can use that. I don't even know what the username is either, because I, I, I'm i not actually sure I have this now, because I know I've used mods of this game before, <laughs> but now you're telling me this one needs this outside the game, and then and now I have to go get another five-digit code. Oh my god. Holy shit. Do you see the car there now? Should be seven uh, and seven? It is not here. I think I do have to reboot the game just. How do I invite you to a game? Uh, no, it has not appeared. I, I could certainly try and join. Uh, how did I do that? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> the world is trying to fight me and I'm fighting back. This host has two mods you don't already have. Do you want to subscribe to them automatically? Except connection was aborted. Me too. Impossible to subscribe to mod. Fuck. Cannot enable this mod. Mod is not installed. Well, yeah, bitch, I know it's not installed, but like I want to install it. Searching for a session. This host uses one mod that you do not have. Do you want to subscribe to them automatically? Oh, please. Impossible to subscribe to mods. Fuck! Oh, hang on. Here we go. Hang on. Oh. Hang on. Oh. I've got I've got some hope. I've got your car to show up by re-signing in. However, the creative mode still doesn't fucking work. Hello. I mean, are you Somewhere. moving? You've got no driver. I'm moving. You're over here for me. On my screen, you're still sitting in the garage square where you spawned in. <laughs> You're not gonna believe the message that just- Oh, let me try this again. My message said, I do not have enough RAM. <laughs> what? What how the much, fuck? How much RAM do you have? 32 gig. Some dependent mods are missing. What do you mean dependent mods? There's one. Truck not available in North America. You're, you're not gonna believe what I just did. I closed the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> I have some news. If you're smiling, stop. <sighs> Your car is not in this list. Here we go. Here we motherfucking go. 
Hey, Shiny Odd has joined the game. Okay, I exist. The little funny vehicle exists. And guess what? The signal is red. It's fucking red. And yeah, okay, your vehicle's here. Oh my god, it might be happening, Phil. It might be fucking happening. Leave garage. I see you. Do you see me? I do see you. I'm driving. I'm right next to you. Shit. Okay, do I see you. Can you drive? Yep. I am okay. driving. Does it is your car that's bugged, my friend. Does it just not like my car? What the fuck? I can't believe it. Really? Why? <laughs> All right. Well, it turns out that I'm not a good, as good at mod making as what I thought. Okay. You know what? It's fine. Just give me your thoughts on my automation car. It's basically just a two-wheel drive okay. version of the Scout. So here, here comes my official review. Editor, sorry for the mess you're having to work with. It'll start in three. <laughs> I've damaged it. Three, two, one. Okay, Phil, this is a nice banana car you've got here. And uh, if yeah. I spam a little shifting button, I can even get the wheels to spin up and I can get it to slide around. Look at that. I'm not going to enter the garage. Kicking up a little bit of dirt on concrete. Don't know how, but I'm doing it. <laughs> It's, it's fun. It skids about. It looks like a track car. It has the speed of one, though. I'm going to see if I can spam the gears here to get it to shift up quickly. Yes, it has some raw speed. In fact, I've taken six engine damage. That's how fast it is. It is unrivaled performance. It's You're actually self-destructing. What do you mean? I'm giving an honest <laughs> review for this car currently. It is self-destructing as I'm driving it. Okay, I'm now on the road. It is drifting in the rain. It is wet. It is in a tree. It's Okay, it's dead. Okay, so basically, I think your car is really good, except for almost every single bit of it. I like the fact it doesn't work in multiplayer. It has eaten <laughs> all the RAM on my PC. It crashed the moment it went to take one corner. It is wrinkled now. It's a bent banana, like most of them end up being anyway. And my driver is, well, his hands aren't really on the steering wheel. They're sort of floating next to it. He is, uh, you know, leaning outside of the car. It's I'm wet <laughs> right now. It's raining, so I'm getting wet. There's no roof on it. Uh, I think we've saved the recording. I'm stuck. I'm stuck now. It's, oh yeah, it's don't not go, going well. Don't go in the dirt. You will get stuck. Okay, so you've made a snowrunner mod that can't go off road as well. <laughs> Can, does it have headlights? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're slightly dim. Oh shit. Uh, how do I use them? You're asking too much. Uh, I I am I I have no idea what's going on. You know what? Oh, <laughs> I'm reversing at about three millimeters per hour. It's doing something. <laughs> I think that's a good place for me to wrap up the video. <laughs> a, g a good sarcastic British person shitting on what one of the uh, the, the colony people has ever done. So <laughs> that, that that's it. That's enough. We're done. Well. I mean, the video didn't end so brilliantly, but hey, at least I get to be able to drive a vehicle. I made an automation in SnowRunner. It's gonna be not the only video I make about this. I'm going to make a more off-road appropriate vehicle. This was just the first one. Now that I know how to make things transparent on a map, kind of like my windshield there, I can totally do that to cut out headlights and wear vents it and all that sort of stuff. So then the mesh underneath can be seen, which is how automation do their mods. This one's been a little bit of a flop. Maybe multiplayer doesn't really work with my mod. I may have to troubleshoot that this mod will go up as is however though uh you guys can go try it out it will be publicly available it's only unlisted at the moment just so then uh like people don't get a sneak preview and be like oh i know what his video is and then somebody tries to beat me to the poll uh to the post flag whatever you get the idea anyway I would like to now, however, thank my channel members. You guys are amazing. I would like to, specifically though, say thank you to the Rogue Tick, the, car uh, the Crayon Priest. Apparently I've been seeing Carrion, which is a MTG card, which for some reason that's where my brain was always going, but apparently it's the Crayon Priest. Uh, for being a top tier channel member, you are goddamn amazing, bro. Really? Is there no other bitumen on this map whatsoever? What a, what a great ending. Oh my god, what's with that frame rate? I'm, I'm beached. Anyway, guys, 
I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.